Hello everyone, this is Sister Madeline here with this week's Sunday School lesson for January the 2nd, 2022. And it is entitled, The Way, the Truth, and the Life, speaking about Jesus Christ. Our lesson is found in the Gospel of John, starting in the 14th, 14th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Let's get into this lesson. All right, let's get into this lesson. John chapter 14, starting at the first verse. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. And I'm going to stop right there at that fourth verse. But here we have in, these, uh, in this chapter is Jesus talking to his disciples. And he starts off this discourse with this comforting statement, let not your hearts be troubled. Now, why were the disciples troubled? Okay, so the disciples were troubled about many different things at many different times, just as we are. But in this particular set of scripture, the disciples were worried about what Jesus had told them was about to happen. If you back up in chapter th chapter 13, a couple of things um, Jesus explained to the group. First, he told them that Judas was going to betray him. He didn't say Judas specifically, but he said, you know, said somebody out of the group was going to betray me, all right? And um, the other thing he said to them was, uh, and just before this chapter, he was talking with Peter and he told Peter, he said, you know what? Um, I know, Peter, you think you're on slam jam, but you actually are going to deny me also. So he is telling the disciples some hard things, some things that they've got to come to terms with, some things that they have to come to grips with, Um in their discipleship. And the main thing he's telling them here is that he's going to have to leave. Now, they have been following Jesus. <laughs> they are disciples, literally followers of Jesus. And Jesus is telling them that he is going to leave. Now, I don't know about you, but that's some disheartening news. You don't want to hear that someone that you love, someone that you admire, someone that you um, really care for is leaving. And I'm not talking about even dying. We don't want to hear about them, um, you know, moving away. I mean, I've been saddened, you know, numerous times in my life when I've been separated from people who I hold very dear to me. But here's Jesus telling his disciples that, you know what, I'm leaving and not just physically leaving, like to move to a different city, but he's saying that he is going to, um, you know, have to die. You know, so that was some troubling news. And so here's Jesus, um, uh, you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit, comforting his disciples with these words. And it starts off again with let not your hearts be troubled. So he's trying to give them some comfort. Believe you believe in God. Believe also in me. In the second verse, he says, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare this place, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, ye may be also. So here is more that he is adding to his um, statements and, and words of comfort. He's saying this. In my father's house are many mansions. In the Jewish customs, I was reading um, as I studied, it said that it was customary for a father to add rooms onto his house so that his son and his, you know, the son's newly married family could, you know, come and stay. So here he's using this illustration that there's a father and in that father's house are many mansions, many rooms. All right. And not only that, Jesus is saying, I'm going to go to prepare these rooms for you. And not only that, I'm going to come back and get you so that you can reside with me. Now, all of this is kind of at that mystery level, because at the time, the disciples really still fully didn't grasp what Jesus was teaching. But now what we see and what we understand is that Jesus is telling them that he had to die 
so that he could go back to the father. And while he is there, one of the things that's happening is he's preparing, okay, those rooms. All right, here it says mansions, but in the other translations, it talks about rooms. He's preparing those rooms. And he's preparing those rooms for the time that he's going to return to come back and take up and get his people so that they can occupy those rooms in glory. So praise God that here we have a promise of Christ returning again. And this is not the return to set up the, the kingdom, but this is the return to get us. And we call that the rapture where he's going to come and receive us unto himself so that where he is up in heaven, up in glory, we may be also. OK, and that's a promise for his disciples. That's a promise for those that follow him. So remember, this is not for everybody. This is not just everybody gets to go. But this is for those who are prepared to return with Jesus when he comes. Amen. All right, continuing on um, in verse four, I'll read that again. Uh, it says, and whether I go, ye know, in the way ye know. Here in verse five, Thomas, one of the disciples, speaks up. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. So let's break down this set of scriptures. These are, these are power packed. So at the beginning of this discourse, um, Jesus ends his statement earlier by saying, you know what? You know where I'm going and you know the way. And Thomas is not real clear on that teaching. Thomas, he speaks up and he's like, you know what, Jesus? I don't really know. And you know what? I, I want to add this on to Thomas. A lot of times we, you know, people in the church like to give Thomas a bad rap. But if you don't know something, the Bible says, ask, seek and knock, especially if you are trying to figure something out. So it is nothing wrong with asking and praying for clarification, especially as you study God's word. So <laughs> Holy Spirit, help us in understanding what you are talking about. So here's Thomas saying, you know what? We don't know where you are going. And so then how can we know how to get there? So now again, he's thinking naturally. So, so it's not like he's going, you know, put into Google about take me where Jesus is. And Jesus is clarifying for him in the sixth verse and giving him an answer to his question. So we're going to break that sixth verse down. It says, Jesus told him, I am the way. In other words, Thomas, the path that you are seeking is not some directions, but better yet, it's a person and it is me. Jesus talked in some other verses, and I'm going to read them for you, about him being the way, okay? The way to the Father, the way to eternal life. He is the way to life everlasting. And in John chapter 3, verse 36, it says, the one who believes in the Son, Jesus Christ himself, he's talking about himself, the one who believes in the Son has eternal life. That's the way to get there. You have to believe in Jesus. It says, but the one who rejects the son will not see life. Instead, the wrath of God remains on him. Remember, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And in from the beginning, since the garden, everyone that was born was born in sin. We were born under that curse and we were born separated away from God the Father. And Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had to come down to build the bridge and to give us a chance of making it back into um, fellowship with God. Remember that. Now, keep you got that's that's the premise that all of this is built on. So Jesus told him, I am the way. And that was John 3 and 36. I have another one. Um, John 5 and 
24 says, truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me, this is Jesus saying, if you believe the words that I'm saying and you believe him who sent me, has eternal life and will not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. So if you believe in Jesus and if you have accepted him and we have put our trust in him, then we will escape the punishment that is death and eternal separation from God. He, Jesus told Thomas, I am the way. You want to go where I'm going? You have to accept me. This is what Jesus is saying. So not only am I the way, let's move on to the next part. He also said, I am the truth. Um, let's get some scriptures to go along with this one. In Hebrews 6, it says, I think 6 and 18, it says, it is impossible for God to lie. All right. And in as much as Jesus is God's only begotten son, he has those same attributes. Remember, in order for Jesus to be our atonement for sin, he had to be a perfect sacrifice. Remember, the, the doves, the blood of doves and bullocks and oxen, that would not do. And those were only temporary replacements um, that the priests would make those sacrifices to try to atone for the sins of the people, all right, in the Old Testament. But now that we've moved into that New Testament, here we have Jesus as our perfect sacrifice that would die once and for all so that all of those other sacrifices would not have to be made anymore. And in order for him to qualify as the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, he had to be spotless without blemish. And that meant that he could not lie. So if he could not lie, then he by his very nature is truth. So here we have Jesus explaining that he was the way. He was the path to the father. He was the truth of the matter. And the last thing he said was, uh, no one comes, oh, excuse me, and the life. <laughs> All right. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. All right. In the first chapter of John, it says, in him, let me read it right. It says, in him was life. And that life was the light of men talking about Jesus. Because this is in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And we had that lesson in the summer. Um, also, it says in John chapter, uh, chapter 17. That's where we want to go. John 17 and three. It says, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. So Jesus is telling him, I am the way, I'm the path, I am the truth, and I am the life. It says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Let me stop right there and let me just wave this uh, flag of caution this world today, and especially in this technological age and this social media age and in the age where you can share something um, out on the Internet. What is happening is that people are seeing and receiving messages put out on the Internet and they are trying to replace them as the gospel. People are trying to sell you on an alternative way of making it to heaven. They're trying to sell you on an alternative way of salvation. And here the Bible is clear. There is no alternative to the father. There is no other way to heaven. There is nothing else that is true. And there is no life outside of Jesus Christ. No one comes to the Father except through 
me. People are saying, now, oh, don't take all of that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to accept this. You don't have to line up. It's I've never seen a day like today where people want to just do what they want to do. Everybody's got their own agenda and they're like, this is the way it is. And this is how I see it. And this is my truth. What There's no such thing as my truth. There is the truth. And that truth is Jesus Christ. Okay, so if your truth does not include and line up with what Jesus Christ has said, then your truth is actually false. And people don't want to be told that what they think or believe is incorrect. But the Bible is here to help us out and thank God. Jesus is saying, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through the last verse here says, and if you know me, you will also know my father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And what Jesus is saying is that, you know what? Everything about God that you need revealed to you is standing right here in front of you. It is in who I am. You see how Jesus was not here for himself. People are trying to make themselves out to be celebrities. Jesus wasn't even trying to make himself a celebrity. And he actually was a celebrity. Everything he did and said, point it to the father. And let us take an example from that. Our last week's lesson was our humble Lord. And we were, it was an, about being an example, right, of humility. Well, let's take an example from this. And I'm, thank you, Holy Spirit, that what we do in our lives should do just like what Jesus is doing. It should point to the Father. It should always glorify God. And everything that we do, we should always seek to glorify God. We want our lives to be the mirror that reflects the image of Christ. And that mirror also points us to God the Father. And he's saying, if you've seen me, then you've seen the Father. Because Jesus was the express image of God the Father. He was the God-man. He was God down here on earth. Amen. This is good, y'all. All right, here's the last part of our lesson, starting at verse 8 all the way to 11. That's the end. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? My words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the father and the father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. Amen. Okay, at this point now, Jesus is a little disappointed <laughs> <laughs> now, here we have someone else. Philip is saying, show us the father. He just went through that discourse about I'm the way, the truth and the life. All right. And a lot of what this set of scriptures is saying, um, I addressed in the previous part. I got a little ahead of myself. Sorry. But uh, Jesus said to him, I have have I been among you all this time and you do not know me, Philip. And Philip didn't. He really didn't. He wasn't the only one. Um, a lot of what Jesus was teaching them while he was in their presence, they wouldn't come to terms with until after he left the scene. After the resurrection, um, after the Holy Spirit came upon them um, and they really were set out to do and carry on the work of Christ, they wouldn't get it until then, really. So um, here Jesus is answering Philip, though, and he's saying, you know what? everything that I've taught you about who I am is who I am. And it is pointing to the father. And he's trying to tell them, you know what? You want to see the father? Look at me because I am of the father. The father is of me. He's in me. I'm in him. So he's trying to show him that connection um, so that Philip wouldn't, you know, waste time looking for something else. 
right? You know, I, there was another instance where it said, you know, are you who we're looking for or should we seek another? And Jesus was always trying to show them that he was what had been prophesied. He was what was coming, who was coming, the answer to their prayers and their woes and their cries. He was showing, trying to show them that I am who I am. And it goes on to say, uh, the one who sees me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Why are you asking to see the father? Don't you believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? So here's the proof that God, uh, that Jesus gives to the disciples. First, he said the words that he speaks. He talks about the words that he has spoken. And if you read all the recorded words of Jesus, he does not speak of himself. He does not speak of um. Uh, you know, some other deity. He doesn't speak of uh, another person. He is speaking um, the words of God. He said, the words that I speak, I do not speak on my own. The father who gives or the father who lives in me does, does his works. All right. The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The father who lives in me does his works. And he, so he's saying that, you know, I'm just a mouthpiece. I'm just saying what the father tells me to say. And listen, this is a faith walk. We have to believe Jesus Christ is and was who he said. And if the words are not enough to convince, if the words were not enough for us to just say, okay, I accept it. Here, Jesus offers them something else. He says, believe me that I am in the father and the father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. See, the disciples were at an advantage in this regard, somewhat, in that they walked with Jesus. They saw the miracles performed. They saw, and I'm going to read this out of the book because I like the way they said it. It says, the miracles of Christ were another proof. Every miracle he performed testified to the fact that he was God. No one else could bring a man back from the grave. No one else could control the wind and the waves. No one else could give sight to the blind or hearing to the deaf. The testimony of the miracles proved his claim to divinity. His own resurrection would be the greatest miracle of all. And that would finally convince the disciples. My God, they might not have believed while he was there, but they had proof. They had the miracles. They had the works. And Christ is saying here, you know what? Believe because of the works. I'm still not I'm still not here for myself. Notice I'm just here promoting the father. Everything that I've said promotes the father. The things that I have done didn't promote myself. They all were so that you could believe on him who sent. I think Jesus gave Philip a pretty good answer. Man, let's just wrap this up. All right. Uh, this lesson was so rich. Like I said, it had so much in it. Uh, Jesus started off with, let not your heart be troubled. Okay. There are so many troubles in this life. Um, again, our book says something great in here. And I just want to just read it to kind of summarize our lesson and we're done. It says, the one we trust for eternal life is the one we are to trust for daily life. Believing that Jesus is God and placing our faith in him for salvation places us on the path of following him. His words become our guide for daily living. So, you know, we don't have to let our hearts be troubled in this life because we can rely and lean on the Lord for help in our daily living. I'm not saying it's not going to be hard, but it's a lot better with Christ. The book goes on to say there are many who, like Philip, want to see a vision of God. Some have even claimed to see the face of God in some way or another. But God has already sent us the person of Jesus Christ to reveal all he wanted us to know about himself. Jesus came to show us the Father, and we must trust the fact that everything Jesus said was the word of God and that everything Jesus did was the work of God. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Amen.